How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the next episode. We're going to call this the peanut butter compound episode because so far I've mixed probably about almost two gallons of epoxy, cabosil, half inch chap strand fiberglass. Tons and tons of mixing. Like I said before, and I said a few times just in case you haven't caught it is epoxy depending on how hot or cold it is around 80 degrees outside it will dry and in the pan or in the pot probably like in 20-15 minutes hard to say but it basically dries pretty quick if you're used to using polyester resin and you jump to epoxy ooh, is it a little bit of a change I'll tell you what take a look here you can see pieces of the half inch chop strand embedded into the epoxy. All the structural joints are epoxy here. This is still somewhat gel, not quite completely set up. The way you can tell is it has a little bit of a yellow hue to it. When it completely dries out, it'll be a semi clear. One of the things that we need to do after the peanut butter dries is we're going to do some light sanding, make sure there's no edges that are poking up, mainly from the half inch uh, chop strand. You'll see some right there. It'll probably need to get sanded out. The other thing too is you want to coat all your exposed wood, especially in areas where it's going to be in contact with water. Water will be flowing through the ski locker, underneath the fuel tank, and then out through the bilge area into this area over here. So you definitely want to coat all the wood. I started to coat a little bit of it in the front here. You can see over here on the right, this has been completely coated. Came out pretty good. Also have some Kevlar there, as you saw from the prior episode. Got just a little bit more peanut butter to apply towards the very very back see a little spot right there and that pretty much wraps it up I'll go around and look and see if there's any spots that I miss let's take a look at the back too since we're here all right see there we've coated it probably with two layers I believe came back and then double checked it make sure it had a nice smooth edge one of the things to note, once you start applying your peanut butter, all the creaks that you would hear as you're getting in and out of the boat from it flexing seem to have gone away. Interesting enough, as you can imagine, we started gluing, uh, gluing, ugh, gluing the structural joints here, these stringers, so it kind of makes it more rigid so all the, the sounds that you probably had been hearing may have gone away. I, I noticed that the first time I, I rebuilt the boat it seemed a little bit more as you jump up and down it seems a little bit more rigid. All right. And you'll see I have some painters tape. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take and pour some epoxy resin into this little joint. There's probably about maybe get my thumbnail on that side. I just want to make sure it, it penetrates down into that little crevice area since we have three pieces meeting up. You can probably see it a little bit more on this side where we have more of like maybe an eighth inch on one side, about the same on the other. I'm just gonna take and pour some resin in there so it kind of fills the voids a little bit. Some of these edges, so I've got this question too, some of these edges like this where they're super smooth, do you use any peanut butter in those sections? And the answer would be no. If you've got a smooth connection, from here to here there's really no need to and you'll know it when you see it I've said before on oh here's a good spot right here like right there I had a little spacer there to kind of raise it up a little bit those areas definitely need peanut butter if you try to jump your Kevlar from this side to this side you're gonna have nothing but problems you definitely need to fill that void that's roughly a quarter of an inch and that's kind of what's been seen throughout the stringer, that's why it has peanut butter all the way along the edge. Completely common. It's not uncommon by any means to see that because as you're cutting into this, 
you may have cut a little bit too much or sanded a little bit too much either way these little voids like this you're definitely going to see it so whatever you do don't take your 1708 and attach it from here to here this void will eventually crack your um, tabbing joint there you want to fill that with the peanut butter compound now another thing you may have noticed is all the support pieces of pine have been removed on the left and right that kind of allows us to get underneath the stringers in certain tight spots around here and these little areas that kind of helps you get in between them better because once they're in the in the way it's kind of hard to get around them the last of the braces are going to be these guys right here you may be tempted to remove them after you do the left and right sides however and even in the back too it's got a pretty good bond and then you can see they're mechanically um, fastened with stainless steel screws here technically you could remove them I personally would not until you apply so that's gonna need some peanut butter you can see down there we got more maybe like a quarter of an inch gap back there once I apply the peanut butter along the inner edges on the left and right we'll go ahead and pull these off I just want to make sure we keep these things as level as possible so we don't lose we don't lose that because once once this is once these braces are off there's no way to get it back um, your levelness and yeah you definitely don't want to do that here's a good shot of everything like I said a lot of work this is probably the most time consuming part of the project getting the peanut butter installed it's probably from a structural standpoint the most important part too because your foundation is going to be the most important part of the boat so if you skimp on this side or you don't do a good enough job when you're installing these stringers you're going to have all kinds of issues when you put your fuel tank in when you get your ski locker door installed you're going to have all kinds of problems so definitely take your time when you're going through this part of the project Get everything sealed up real good. Get that peanut butter compound in place. Fill in all your gaps. Once everything dries the next day, come back in with the grinder. Smooth off everything. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish the inner sides of the engine mount. Get that peanut butter applied in those low sections over there. Fill in a little gap to the left and right of the screen on those stringers. And that should do it. So here's a shot of my cabasil. I got a whole bucket full and you can see so far in the project that is pretty much it. I'm gonna have to order another bucket of the cabasil but this is this is one of their bigger buckets. Definitely had to use a lot of it so as you're going through your project definitely buy more because it's it's better to to have more than than basically to run out also been talking about 1708 fiberglass throughout the series but i haven't really showed you what it looks like per se so i actually have some left over from an old project it's basically defined by its obviously it's fiberglass and it's got its biaxle so they've got thread running in two different directions and then they sew it together and that's what gives you your 1708 and then what makes it kind of special and really thick is they put on the back they sew along with the 1708 a it's like a chop strand that's been pressed into sheets so they, they put that all into place and overall I forgot how many ounces this is it may be like 17 ounces but this stuff is super thick you're going to have to buy a lot of uh, polyester resin to get this laid out because it definitely soaks up. It's pretty good though. It's pretty, pretty much the standard if you're using fiberglass. But as you can imagine, for the sake of this series, we are going to be using more and more Kevlar. Take a look. I got huge sheets. This one is going to, when we coat the flooring, this is actually an eight foot wide sheet of Kevlar 
we're gonna lay Kevlar right on top. What a lot of people do instead of laying Kevlar or um, you know material like this, they, they they lay basically a press molded chop strand. Let me show you what that looks like. All right, this is five yards of it. Still got left over from an old project, but you can see cuts pretty easy. You can use scissors. Let's see if I can open it up a little bit, but it's not very thick. It's like those little strands that I've, I've been mixing in with your um, peanut butter compound. It's like that, but a little bit smaller. This isn't quite half inch, but it's just huge. It's a huge mat of it. Let's see if I can get a shot from the side. Yeah, five yards. So this is what people use. Uh, structural wise, it's not very good. It This definitely will degrade over time. It's not, it, this used to be the standard on a lot of boats, on all the joints. Where you see me putting Kevlar, this is where they put um, this chop strand in it not not a big fan of it but it's good for non-structural pieces if you're just trying to coat like the engine stand and you don't want to put kevlar on it definitely use this stuff now you'll see some of the stringers that still need to be coated because all the wood in here needs to have some sort of sealant on it this is kind of what i bought these for you can get them from us composites they're glass coaters and basically what you'll do is you'll just get like a painter's tray full of um, mixed up epoxy resin, or you can use polyester if you're just coating um, wood for sealant purposes. But yeah, you'll, you'll take these and you'll just coat along the edges, along the top. You wanna make sure you seal all the wood that's in here because like I said, moisture gets all over the place and you wanna give your wood a fighting chance. Okay, so you'll see areas like there in front where you don't need to mix the cabocil real thick in here. You can actually kind of see if we can do it without wasting. You can actually kind of pour it into those little seams like that and capture it with your paintbrush and just kind of help fill those little voids like that. Definitely want to get that off on top. You see that chop strand in place? Just like that. And it looks like, put a little bit more in there. I want to try to catch it before it gets too low. And there's kind of a valley right here, so if you can kind of scoop it into this little valley, it won't drip. It'll just stay right in there and cure. Like I said before, you want to smooth off any kind of high spots. I got a little bit of high spot right there. Yeah, but otherwise that's how you fill a little joint like that. Typically, like I said, I don't make it this liquidy. That's typically not what I like to do because it doesn't pour very well when you do that. But it's really good for filling up spots like that where you don't have a lot of uh, thickness that's required. You just need chop strand and epoxy in place. All right, so there's that familiar looking yellow hue as it's starting to kick off. Went and filled up this little void here. So everything at this point is going through and drying, just as suspected. Anyway, that's gonna be pretty much it for this episode. A little bit shorter one than normal but basically just included how to peanut butter your stringers if you're not already a subscriber hit that subscribe button it's me riding in a boat smash that like button if you thought the video was helpful if you got any questions as always throw them in the comments field I'll get to them typically in about a day or two as always I hope you liked the video catch you up on the next episode have a good one, everybody.